Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. How is everyone? Good. Good. Are you okay? Yeah. Nice to hear. We need to cover many important things today, which will have a practical, a practical usage. So, uh, what is the date today? Is it 13th. 15th? 13th. Oh my God, look. Yes, definitely 13th. Look, I'm ahead of everyone. Quite many people are here already, so I will start calling your names. Okay, Andrew? Here. Yes, Tima? Here. Lorraine? Here. Lynn? Here. Um, Juanita? Um, Yuran? Here. Gabriel? Here. Divina? Here. Kobe? Chantal? Here. Ricardo? Hochito? Gongsi? Here. Kyle? Here. Matthew? Here. Uh, Julian? Here. Nathan? Here. Uh, okay. And Alejandro? Here. Okay. Um, what I'm planning to do today, I hope that everyone uh, was quite serious about reviewing material uh, which we have to use for uh, our lectures. But today, I would like to show you one of methods which is actively used in many European countries. But unfortunately, I did not see that at many American textbooks. In my professional opinion, this European method is much easier than what is published in many books here, because if you remember working with trigonometric uh, uh, expressions, solving equations, you were forced to use coordinates of many, many, many points on the circle. Did you use that method? Yeah. Yes? Guys, I need to get some replies from you. I'm talking about uh, endpoints, which were endpoints on terminal sides of many angles on the circle. Is it true? Did you use that method? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That method, which I'm going to um, discuss with you today, is different. You don't need to use this coordinates on this circle because honestly in my professional opinion this um, circle with all these coordinates on the circle in my opinion i call it like a monster circle because it is too much to deal with i'm going to show you a method where you need to know uh trigonometric values only of limited number of angles, like I already mentioned this the last time, because I told you to um, review specifically values of all trigonometric functions for all quadrantal angles. And quadrantal angles, if let's say we just list them in degrees, are zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, to 70 degrees and 360 degrees. These are our quadrantal angles because they are formed by um, 
x and y axis. And as you know, x and y axis divide circle into four quadrants. This is why we call them quadrantal angles. And at the same time, we actively in trigonometry use angles as 30 degrees angle, 45 degrees angle, and 60 degrees angle. We call them reference angles. What I'm going to do right now, I will be talking about symmetry in these circles and reference angles. So basically, you can write today's topic as symmetry and reference angles. And I really recommend you to sketch two circles. This is the last material which we covered last time. If you remember, we reviewed some formulas and we solved the problem when we found um, five missing values of trigonometric functions when we had value only of one trigonometric function. It was cosine theta equal to one fifth and we had a location of theta. Theta was from the fourth quadrant. This is just to remind you. Um, can I remove this paper? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now, please sketch side by side two circles. I already prepared this material. This is a paper clip right here. Please sketch first two circles, trigonometric circles, show your X and Y axis, and I will tell you what to do after. First, please sketch that circles. You can use something roundish to do that, or maybe you can do that even by hand. Uh, definitely in this case, your circles will be not perfect. I also used actually something roundish right here to sketch that because I, I'm not at home where I have all these tools. This way please sketch these circles. And in these circles, please show at the beginning only one angle, 30 degrees angle. How can you do that? Very easily. You can divide an arc in the first quadrant into three congruent pieces, three congruent pieces, and connect the first point with the origin, because this arc contains 90 degrees, third part will contain 30 degrees. Basically, you divide it into three congruent pieces, each contains 30 degrees. You are taking one point, first one, right here, connecting this with the origin. Origin is right here. And please write down that this is 30 degrees. 30 degrees angle. Do you see that? Yes. Can you see the point M? M is the end point on that circle, which means this is the end point of the terminal side for this 30 degrees angle. And below that M, you probably can see, I hope you can see, there are coordinates of that point M x equal x coordinate is square root of 3 over 2 and y coordinate is 1 half and as you understand i'm using here unit trigonometric circle so here it is very easy to prove that we have this value so i am assuming that you know that this m should have these coordinates and now after you did that, can you please find that point N, which is symmetric with M with respect to X axis? Just go down with 30 degrees, which means you are building negative 30 degrees angle. Even doing that, 
I can call that 30 degrees angle as a reference angle because to build negative 30, I basically uh, used arc with the same length, like from zero level to point M, and uh, the arc from zero level to N also has the same length. And this why that new angle is negative 30 degrees because we went into negative direction for angles. Is it clear? Yeah. So, and what you see here in coordinates, can we say that points M and point N, they share the same X coordinate? Can you see that dashed perpendicular connecting M and N? Yeah. So what is the meaning of that? It means that they have same X coordinate. This Y for N, you can see X coordinate is also square root of three over two. But one of these points is above X axis. Another one is below X axis. They are on the same distance. I'm talking about M and N from X axis, it means that the, the distance from zero level to M point or from zero level to N point, I'm talking about vertical distance, is the same, distance is the same, but coordinates are different. One coordinate will be positive, this is for M point, and one will be negative, this Y, Y coordinate is negative one half for N, but for M, it was positive one half. So far, so good? Yes. And now, what you can see on the side, can you see, I wrote down alpha is equal to 150 degrees? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But look what I'm doing right below that line. First, I wrote, Alpha is equal to 150 degrees, but can I treat this like 180 degrees minus 30 degrees? Yeah. yeah. And look what I did here. I show this right here. Can you see that alpha? Can you look at the arrow? This is right here, right here. And I wrote alpha. So this is my alpha. And look for reference, I show again that here, this is the angle congruent with the original angle because it also contains 30 degrees. This why I am 30 degrees above of level, which is 180 degrees. This why alpha is 150 or 180 minus 30 degrees. Is it clear? Guys, yeah. look what I have after. I have another angle, which is beta. And beta is, I would say, 30 degrees lower than 90 degrees level. This is 60 degrees. Can I write this like 90 degrees minus 30 degrees? Yes. And can you see I named this angle beta? Now, the last one here on the side is gamma. Gamma is more on the other side from y-axis from 90 degrees. And this is 90 degrees plus 30 degrees angle, which is 120 degrees. I'm doing this purposely, why? Because can you see in all these angles, somehow I'm using 30 degrees, sometimes adding two quadrantal angles, sometimes subtracting from these angles, from quadrantal angles. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yes. yes. And li now listen what I'm going to do. This now is the main part of this European uh, method. Let me grab a piece of paper. Where are my papers? Okay. Look what happens. So let's assume that we know that for 30 degrees angle, 
the proper point is square root of three over two comma one half. This is the unit trigonometric circle. This y, I immediately can write that sine of 30 degrees is one half. It is equal to y x, uh, y coordinate. Cosine of 30 degrees equal to square root of three over two. If I know these two values, I can find the values of four other without any problem using formulas and um, information about pairs of reciprocals. But now let's see what I basically can do with angle alpha. If you remember, alpha was 150 degrees. Actually, 150 degrees can be written like 180 degrees minus 30 degrees, what we wrote. But if I decide to use another reference angle, can I say that, let's say 150 degrees equal to 90 degrees plus 60 degrees? Yeah. Yeah. But in this case, I will be using different reference angle. This time, for the second version, reference angle will be 60 degrees. This why? Because here, on these circles, I used from the beginning 30 degrees as a reference angle. I will be operating with that 30 degrees angle. Is it clear? Now, to get values, let's say, for sine or cosine or for the rest, I will be using that version if I use, let's say, 30 degrees. Let's say sine of 150 degrees. What I'm doing, I'm writing down that it is 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. And now listen carefully. This is what I wrote down. 150 degrees. Is it the angle from the second quadrant? Yes. Please try to write all down all these details. So you are not obligated to do that, but I will make it more visual and below that 150 degrees, I wrote down, belongs to the second quadrant. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Now, in the second quadrant, sign, don't forget that sign in this circle is equal to the y coordinate. So sine is positive or negative? Positive. In the second quadrant, sine, which is affiliated with y coordinate of the point. In other words, in the second quadrant, sines, or let's say y's, are positive or negative? Positive. Positive. You are not obligated to write plus, but I purposely did that. I wrote down big plus. So, which means I know that sine of 150 degrees should be positive. Next. Can you look at what you have in parentheses? Do you have 180 degrees minus 30 degrees? Yes. Look at the quadrantal angle. Quadrantal angle is 180 degrees. Now listen carefully. Is it a vertical quadrantal angle or horizontal? horizontal? Listen carefully. If in this parenthesis you have any horizontal quadrantal angle, you will keep the same function. So it will be sine plus sine. It will be sine and that's it. And now, regardless of what you have in this parenthesis, you can have plus reference angle. You can have minus reference angle. It doesn't matter. It will be equal to the sine of that reference angle. That's it. According to this rule, sine of 150 will be equal to positive sine of 30 degrees, which means it is also equal to one half. This is that method. Let me repeat details. First step here, write down that given angle in different form. Again, 
what can we have for 150 degrees? Sine of 150 degrees, if you like, can be sine of 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. If you like to use different reference angle, it can be sine of here 90 degrees plus 60 degrees. Okay? Now I will show you how to use another reference angle for the same 150 and for the same value sign. I'm writing down or sine of 180 degrees equals. This time I'm using another version. I'm using 90 degrees plus 60 degrees. And I'm going to use same method. I'm going to ask myself a few questions. First, 150 degrees, is it from the second quadrant? Yes. So again, you are not obligated to write it down. This is the new method. This is why I'm explaining all these details. Now, in the second quadrant, original function sign, is it positive? Yes. Now look at this parenthesis. What do you see in parenthesis? You see 90 degrees plus 60 degrees. Look at the quadrantal angle and ask yourself if this 90 degrees quadrantal angle vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Vertical. With verticals, you will never keep the original name of the function. You need to switch to its so-called co function. For sine, co function is cosine. Even the name says that. For cosine, co function is sine. For tangent, it is cotangent. For cotangent, it is tangent, etc. So, which means now we are switching to cosine but it will be cosine of the reference angle. And cosine is now of 60 degrees. So practically, sine of 150 degrees is equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. And cosine of 60 degrees is also one half if you re reviewed these values. You can use or, or, up to you. What you should keep? in your mind. If you are using any horizontal quadrantal angle, you keep the same name of the function. If you are using vertical quadrantal, you are switching to its core function. That's it. You don't need to memorize the coordinates for 150 degrees. You just need to know values or coordinates for reference angle, which, is, which are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees in many cases. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. And I will continue. I will show you more. Now, please do this second. Please sketch the second circle. Because I did not want to show all angles on first circle because it would look like a mess. What you can see here, you can see same points M and N. M is the end point for 30 degrees angle and you see coordinates square root of three over two and one half. And N is symmetric with respect to X axis a point with M, so which means it has coordinates square root of three over two and minus one half. But you see right now new angles. Look on the top right here. First angle, which I am going to uh, show here is theta. Theta is 210 degrees. If we use 30 degrees as a reference angle, how can we write it down? Can we write that it is 180 degrees plus 30 degrees? Yeah. Yes. Next one, can you see here for, for, for this theta, the end point is D. Can you see that D here on the circle? For the next angle, end point is F. And this time I am using angle, this is letter 
delta. It's a small case delta. Capital delta looks as a triangle. You can see that capital delta on all airplanes for delta airlines. This is small case delta. We use this in math physics a lot, this letter. Delta is 240 degrees. Again, if we are using 30 degrees angle like reference, so it will be 270 degrees minus 30 degrees. Is it clear? Yes. And the other last actually letter is epsilon. Epsilon. This is epsilon. It is 300, let's say, degrees. I did not show 330 degrees because it will coincide with N. Because 330 degrees or negative 30 degrees, they have same terminal side and the same endpoint N. But epsilon is 300 degrees. And again, if we are using 30 degrees like a reference angle, so it will be 270 degrees plus 30 degrees. Please show all these angles. This time it is theta, delta, and epsilon. And now you can choose any of these angles, and I will show how it work. It can work for these angles, this same method. You can choose or theta or delta or epsilon. Which one do you want to use? Because the strategy will be the same for all these angles. Epsilon. Epsilon, excellent. Let's say this time, I like to find the value of cosine because I already found the value of sine for one angle. Definitely you can find values of all these angles. So let's first write it down that we are considering epsilon which is 300 degrees. And I am looking, let's say, for cosine of 300 degrees. And again, for all these examples, I use the same reference angle, which was 30 degrees angle. This is why I am going to write cosine 270 degrees plus 30 degrees which we already had next to that circle. Okay. And now please tell me about the location of 300 degrees angle from which quadrant? First, second, third, or fourth? Fourth. Fourth. 300 belongs to the fourth quadrant. Don't forget cosine of any angle according to its definition is or affiliated with x coordinate or equals to x coordinate. We are using unit trigonometric circle, so in this case, actually, it is it equals to uh, x coordinate. And now let's talk about all details. Three hundred degrees angle from the fourth quadrant is going to have what kind of sign, positive or negative? It should be matching the sign of the X coordinate. In other words, X coordinate in the fourth quadrant is positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So look what I immediately get. I'm doing this for demonstration up to you to write this plus or not, or not, because I'm just trying to make it more visual. Now, look at what you have in parentheses. In parentheses, you have 270 degrees plus 30 degrees. Which one is a quadrantal angle? 270. 70. Is it vertical or horizontal? Vertical. 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 Use as soon as you set vertical, what should click in your mind? Should we keep same function or we need to change it? Change it. We need to change it. We need to change. Just try to remember vertical angles, quadrantal, they are, they are leading us to change the name. If we have horizontal quadrantal, we keep the same name. 
changing the name, we had cosine. Now we need to switch to which function? Sine. Right. And it will be sine of the reference angle. I don't mind what I have in parentheses, plus or minus. So practically, according to this method, cosine of 300 degrees should be equal to sine of 30 degrees. What is the value of the sine of 30 degrees? Is it one half? Yes. That's it. It is equal to one half. That's it. This is that method. What about details about this method? You need to rewrite your angle, which was given in the problem in different form. In this form, you need to use or sum or difference. You need to use one of quadrantal angles because the same angle, let's say if we are talking about 300 degrees from one point, we use this like 270 degrees plus 30 degrees. If I like, can I say that it is 360 degrees minus 60 degrees? Yeah. Yes. So which means you will be, if you are using 360 degrees minus 60 degrees, you are using a different reference angle. If we are using 270 degrees plus 30, you are using 30 degrees as a reference angle. If you are using 360 minus 60 degrees, you are using 60 degrees like a reference angle. But if you are using 360 degrees minus 60 degrees, it is 300 again. It is again in the fourth quadrant, so it will be carrying positive sign. But 360 is a horizontal quadrantal angle. So this why you will be keeping same cosine. Let me actually show that. One second, please. So let's make it visual because, again, this is much easier to show in the process. So. Uh, let me write like or. So uh, this time I'm using 360 degrees minus 60 degrees, but it is again equal to 300 degrees. 300 degrees is the from the fourth quadra, quadrant. A cosine in the fourth quadrant, we all the time think about original angle and original function. Cosine is positive, but because we are using now a horizontal quadrantal angle, which is 360 degrees, we keep the same name of the function, but now it will be cosine of 60 degrees. And cosine of 60 degrees is also equal to one half, that's it. And you don't need to memorize coordinates for the end point for 300 degrees from that trigonometric circle which you used before as a method. You just need to know values of these uh, reference angles, mainly 30 degrees angle, 45 degrees angle, and 60 degrees angle, memorizing these values and values of quadrantal, of functions of quadrantal angles, which we use a lot in our trigonometry. That's it. What do you think about this method? That's cool. It's a very efficient. This is honestly, I don't know if you could realize that or not. It is much, 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 much easier than working with that, as I say, monstrous circle with all these coordinates around for all these angles. Because when I saw first, and actually I have trigonometry book because I teach this semester online trigonometry course as well. When I saw that circle, I was ready to get a heart attack thinking, oh my God, why are they using such a uh, tough uh, method when it can be done much easier? And this is why anytime when I teach trigonometry course, pre-calculus, even if I first time, let's say, you know, students were not in my classes and it is calculus one or two, I immediately tell them about existence of this method, explaining all details, trying to help them to do easier work. Try to learn that because it is much easier and much more modern than using all this, you know, coordinates on this circle. You just need to stick in your mind what? 
rewrite this in different form. In this different form, use one of quadrantal angles. And after that, ask yourself just few questions about location of the angle. It will let you choose plus or minus for the answer. And after that, ask yourself if you were using vertical quadrantal, in this case, you will be changing the name of the function to its co-function, or you are using horizontal quadrantal. In this case, you will be keeping the same name of the trigonometric function. That's it. Do you want to ask me any other question? Guys, please, yes or no, because I need to know what to do. I think we're good. Okay, let's grab a problem. I hope you understood the method. And now we can uh, solve any problem. Okay, I'm on page three, uh, excuse me, 277 from your textbook. And here on the bottom of this book, we have problem number 26. And I'm going to read that problem again, page number 277, problem number 26. I'm re I start reading that problem. This out using a calculator, rank the following numbers in order from smallest to largest. And for some cases, we need to talk about, let's say, some uh, reference angles here as well. So, but you know what? Um, you need to know the location of each angle and you can use reference angles here. How can we work with these problems? I'm going to sketch a circle. One second, please, because I, I, again, I do not want to use very ugly but it is not very beautiful but you i think you can excuse me symmetry and reference angles okay so this is my circle where is my 20 degrees angle is it in the first quadrant guys yes yes okay is it quite close to zero degrees angle? Yes. And the first function here is cosine of 20 degrees, right? And let's say we are using a unit trigonometric circle. First of all, cosine of zero degrees equal to what? Guys, I told you to review all these values, uh, excuse me, definitions. And it is a very easy angle, zero degrees angle. What is the cosine of zero degrees? Oh, zero is one. Is it one? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Is yeah. that the maximum value? Do you understand that cosine fluctuates between negative one and positive one? what happens what happens with its movement more up toward 90 degrees what happens with cosine value in other words what is the cosine value of 90 degrees zero zero, zero. zero. does it mean that actually cosine moving from zero degrees to 90 degrees is decreasing from one yes. to zero yeah. yeah. What happens when it passes 90 degrees level and moves toward here 180 degrees? What is the cosine of 180 degrees? Negative one. Does it continue its movement toward yes. decreasing? 
Yeah. Is it going to reach its minimum, which mm -hmm. is negative one? Yes. Right? And yes. what happens after that when it starts moving down, more down, toward 360 degrees? What is the value of three cosine of 360 degrees? 360 degrees and zero degrees. Do they have the same point, end point on the terminal side? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that three, uh, zero degrees angle and 360 degrees angle, they have same coordinates? I'm talking about the end point. Yes. Yeah. yes. So does it mean that value of the cosine starts increasing after it passes 180 and moves toward 360 degrees? Yes. Yes. Excellent. So we, can we say, can you practically write that cosine of 20 degrees is very close to one? Yes. Yeah. Now let's talk about cosine of 145 degrees. What is the quadrant here? Second. Second quadrant. Second quadrant. Is it practically, let's say, 180 minus uh, what? 35? 35. Yeah. yeah, and 35 degrees, if we just talk about 20 degrees and uh, 45 degrees, uh, uh, excuse me, 35 degrees, is it one greater angle than another one? Right? Yes. I'm talking about positive 45, so which means this is 145 degrees, and I already wrote it down. So if I compare, Cosine of 20 degrees and the cosine of 145, don't forget, cosine of 145 degrees should be negative, right? So definitely cosine of 20 degrees is greater, right? Guys? Yes. Now, where is 35 degrees? 35 degrees, is it above 20 degrees? Yes. Okay, let's say point A was for 20 degrees. Point B was for 145 degrees. Point C is for 35 degrees. Do you understand? We just discussed that moving toward 90 degrees, cosine, cosine, oh, I, I, I need to write it down one second, please, that it is 35 degrees. Cosine decreases. So basically, so far, comparing these three values, can we say that 20 degrees, Cosine of 20 degrees has the largest value. Yeah. And now yeah. we will continue. So what we have 70 degrees, 70 degrees is quite close to 90 degrees. And let's say this is point D, which is the end point for 70 degrees, 70 degrees angle right here. Again, so far with all these points, we can see that um, A is the lowest point here, closest to zero level. So cosine for that angle of 20 degrees definitely is the largest. So where is your finally 150 degrees? Is it quite close to 145? Yeah. So and let's say we have A, B, C, D. Let's say this is point E right here. And this is now 100. 50 degrees. Is it quite close to 180 degrees level? Yeah. yeah. So let's actually arrange them in specific order from the smallest to the largest. In your opinion, which value will be the smallest? Which of these points is closest to the 180 degrees level? Is it point E? Yeah. Yes. So it will be the smallest value. So cosine of 150. What is the next smallest? Is it represented by, by point B? Yeah. Guys, is it B here? Right yeah. here, close to E. I cannot it hear is. you. It is. Yeah. So it will be the next small, which is cosine of 145 degrees. Next is represented by point D. So it will be the next one. The next is cosine of 
35 degrees because again, it is above 20 degrees and the largest definitely is cosine of 20 degrees. I don't have enough space. I squeezed a little bit. This is how I wrote it down. You can write them in that kind of form with symbols of inequalities or you can just list them putting commas between values. But the smallest value was cosine of 150 degrees. At the same time, if we could talk about signs, signs of same angles, definitely the maximum value for sign is being reached at 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So practically, if we talk about this, the angle represented by point D will have the largest sign value because it is the closest point to 90 degrees level at sign of 90 degrees has maximum. At the same time, sign of 270 degrees, we, we have at that point, we have minimum sign of 270 degrees is equal to negative one. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So the next time I will briefly, very briefly, will go over many, many formulas. What kind of formulas? All trigonometric functions for sum, sum and difference of two angles. Trigonometric formulas for double angles. Trigonometric formulas for half angles. Try to make a list of these formulas because you have these formulas in your textbook as well. Make flashcards, make list of formulas. But now I am on page 278. Same section, but I am on different page. And you have very beautiful, actually, problems here, 29 and 30. They are very good, actually, problems. And uh, I'm going to grab any of, let's say, these uh, versions of problems, and we will do the work. Let's say from problem number 29. Let theta be an angle in the first quadrant with sine theta. Let me write down the problem, 29. So with sine theta equal to A, sine theta equals A. And it, <laughs> excuse me, evaluate the following in terms of A. And I definitely do not have uh, lots of problem, uh, lots of time to solve many problems, but let's say I'm on problem B. Sine of theta plus 180 degrees. And I really recommend you to use that method, European method, which I just taught you. Again, theta belongs to the first quadrant. This why we perfectly can use this theta like a reference angle. What I'm going to write, I will rewrite this like sine of 180 degrees plus theta, can I? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you have the angle which is equal to 180 degrees plus theta, is it from the third quadrant? Yes. Is it just Andrew's opinion? Yeah. In the third quadrant sign, which is affiliated with Y coordinate, is positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Right. In parentheses, are you using vertical quadrantal angle or horizontal? That's a horizontal. In horizontal, do we keep the same name or we change it? Keep it. Keep it. So which means it will be sign and it will be sign of the reference angle. So it will be minus sign of theta. We know that sign of theta is A. So the answer here is minus or negative A, if you like. That's it. We solved the problem.
Is it clear? Yeah. Yes. Can you see how much time this method saved you? Because you again said, oh, this is the angle from the third quadrant. I'm talking about 180 degrees plus theta. In the third quadrant, sine should be negative because it is affiliated with y coordinate. Because we are using horizontal quadrantal, we keep the same function. That's it. It will be equal to minus sine of theta because theta here is a reference angle and the answer is negative a that's it did you like this method more yeah, yeah. <laughs> now honestly this is the time saver method so and definitely try to do the homework and i probably will open another um, section as well and we will be again Next time we need to review practically the rest of formulas. There will be tons of formulas because we need to start working with identities. Beside that, we need to work with graphs of trigonometric functions and we need to talk with inverse. We need to work with inverse trigonometric functions. We have a lot. So please be prepared. And again, I'm very serious because I can make, I can offer you even a pop quiz, you know what, for formulas and values. I am such a bad teacher. I can catch you, you know it by <laughs> So, uh, with your permission, can I end today's session? Yes. Yes. Uh, I hope you took good notes and uh, you understood the method, but I will again try to post recording on YouTube and make it available for you. Okay? okay. Guys, have a nice, beautiful day. Okay, please review all values and formulas. I am very serious. Okay. Again, stay well and I wish you the best. Goodbye. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.